Transporting two passengers today, Intelsat 17 and Hylas 1. Welcome if you're just joining us. Our best wishes goes to our customer tonight, Intelsat and Aventi, and to everybody who has worked so hard to bring us to today's launch. Best wishes, everybody. Let's sit back and watch. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage des EAP, décollage. Paramètres à bord sont normaux. And there she blows, hauling herself against the gravity of the Earth, nearly 800 tons, roughly the weight of two jumbo jets. After the initial six-second vertical climb, we rotated to the east, and we're now heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. And we can hear her flying over now in our commentary box. We're burning three engines, two on the boosters, one on the main stage. Of course, the boosters are doing all the work here. Their job is to get us away from the Earth, even though we ignited all three of those engines on the ground. We need an awful lot of firepower to push us against the gravity of the Earth. So those boosters are providing 90% of the thrust right now. That's roughly the equivalent of 12 jumbo jets. They're going to burn for a couple of minutes. Each booster burns two tons of propellant. So to give you a rough idea, if you would fill your car with petrol weekly, you'd uh, be burning about one and a half years worth of petrol in one second. Now, Thomas, um, before launch, all eyes were on the status panels screen, and now we're actually looking at another screen. Um, we call it the trajectory. Oh, on the left-hand side, you can see the curve yeah. on the top. Actually, on the left part of your screen, uh, for our reviewers, there is a line which is the computed sim uh, trajectory of the launch vehicle, and there is a, the a white dot moving on the curve. That's the actual position of the launch vehicle, and this ticks perfectly to the provision of the flight. And we can see here the separation of the boosters. Beautiful images, those two dots falling back to Earth. They've burnt their fuel. We don't need them anymore, so they're falling back down to Earth. So we're losing weight, Thomas. Yes, we have lost about two-thirds of our weight in just two minutes of flight. And you know, the lighter we are, the faster we go. That's the basic rule in space science. Absolutely. And uh, we're looking here at the fairing, the top of the vehicle. It's uh, protecting the two satellites from the riggers of the launch. The satellites are inside oh, it. What kind of riggers are we talking about? Well, first of all, a liftoff. You know, there are acoustic vibration, shock waves coming out from the booster, and the launch is extremely loud. Then we have to remember that the launcher is flying through the dense atmosphere at very, very high Largage speed. De la coiffe. And that causes friction friction warm, warm up the external skin of the launcher. That's what we call the aerothermal flux. And here we can see we're jettisoning the fairing. Um, it's falling back down to earth. You can see it there. Fantastic pictures. The captain has switched off the seatbelt signs. We're technically in space. Uh, we're out of the atmosphere. And of course, we don't have any friction anymore, as you just described. And it took us just three minutes, uh, just over three minutes to get into space. Quite remarkable. So the satellites are now exposed to space. Intelsat 17 at the front, Hylas 1 underneath. Tell us about our speed and altitude, Thomas. As you see, the white dot is moving perfectly on the trajectory. Everything is nominal. That's what the DD just told us. 
We are traveling under 34 kilometers above, above the Earth's surface at a speed of 2.5 kilometers per second. And we're heading out across the Atlantic. In fact, the flight path takes us virtually along the equator, doesn't it? Yeah, and you know, Katie, the French Guiana is the perfect position to launch from because it's uh, almost on the equator line. I would say that's the fastest route to orbit. Now today is the fifth launch of the year for Ariane Space. There's no question the last few months have certainly been busy. Let's find out the latest news. The fourth successful launch this year for Ariane 5 took place less than a month ago. This brings to eight the total number of satellites boosted so far in 2010 and underscores the leading role of Ariane Space in the world marketplace. Azerbaijan has chosen Ariane Space to launch the country's first ever satellite by the end of 2012. Built by the Orbital Sciences Corporation of the US, it'll also deliver important communications to Central Asia, Europe, the Middle East and Africa. The chairman and CEO of Ariane Space, Gianni Legal, has received a special award from an organization called Excellence Francaise on behalf of Ariane Space. The prize recognizes outstanding contribution to technology in know-how and innovation. In November, Ariane Space hosted a reception for the International Academy of Astronautics' 50th anniversary in Washington. Ariane Space has always supported many of the IAA's goals, such as robotic exploration of the planets, understanding climate change, disaster management and human spaceflight. Soyuz, the medium-lift member of the Ariane Space launcher family, has taken a step towards its maiden flight from the Guyana Space Center with successful tests on the mobile gantry. Its job is to enable the satellite to be mated vertically on the vehicle at the launch pad. Meanwhile, Ariane Space's light launcher, Vega, moved closer to completion when a trial version of the first stage was rolled out to the launch pad for testing. Vega is scheduled to start launching payloads to low Earth orbit and sun-synchronized orbit in 2011. All the parameters on board are normal. So, we're burning the main stage, or the core stage, as it's often known, and that burns now for about nine minutes. It's basically a great big tank of propellant. You can see it on the left-hand side of the screen, the white section of the vehicle, and it's powered, Thomas, by the Vulcan engine, which is extremely powerful. Yeah. And uh, actually, the EPC is doing all the work now. It burns 320 kilograms per second, which is almost 500 times more than a gent engine consumption. For flight 198, Intelsat 17 is located in the upper position and Hylas 1 is beneath it. The satellite Hylas 1 that we launched for the account of the Société Inventi. Intelsat 17 arrived in French Guiana on October the 25th and was transported to S1 facility. Tests on the tanks were then conducted successfully. The satellite was then transferred to the S3B building. Feelings were carried out the day prior to the combined operations plan. Hylas 1 was assembled in India at Isro. The satellite arrived at Rochambeau Airport on October the 12th and was transferred to CSG. Electrical tests were carried out at the same time as solar panel and antenna deployment tests. Hylas 1 was then transferred to the S5A building. After filling, final preparation of the satellite was carried out prior to launching the combined operations plan. Intelsat 17 was the first to start activities interfaced with the launch vehicle. It was clamped to its adapter and then transferred to the final assembly building. It was then fitted on Silda and encapsulated inside the fairing. Hylas 1 was clamped to its adapter and hoisted on the launcher. Lastly, the upper composite, the silda, the satellite, the adapter and fairing was integrated on the launcher. The campaign went very smoothly. It's an exciting international adventure with the Americans for Intelsat 17 and for Hylas 1 we have India, France, Europe and the UK. It was truly a great campaign. Thanks for everyone. And we had acquisition of Signal in Natal in Brazil during that film. We're tracking the launcher from ground stations using what we call telemetry. And they have dishes which are a little bit like big ears listening out for the launcher as she flies over. 
accurate Ariane 5 sends data to those ground stations, the big ears, as you say, Katie, and this tells us how the flight is progressing in real time. So later, uh, we can even check how the vehicle performed during what we call the level zero flight evaluation, which take place a few weeks after launch. And we have extinction uh, of the main stage and ignition of the upper stage. Uh, this is going to burn for nearly 16 minutes and we're shedding weight, Thomas. Yes, we started with nearly 800 tons of liftoff and now we have just 27 tons left, which is roughly 3% of the initial mass of the launcher. So the lighter we are, the faster we go. It's that basic law of physics you mentioned. Yes, and it was Sir Isaac Newton who discovered that, Katie. Uh, it's called the first law of dynamics, easy, force equal mass time acceleration. It helped us to understand <coughs> gravity. And most rocket science is based on it. We certainly have a lot to thank him for, don't we? And he would love to be here now with us, I guess, watching this fantastic machine defeating La gravity. Normal, Always fall to be invincible. Yeah, and there is that fantastic machine defying gravity as we speak. The first satellite to be ejected is at the front. It's Intelsat 17. And the relationship between Aryan Space and in, uh, Intelsat goes back a long way. As two world leaders in their fields, the strong links between Intelsat and Ariane Space go back decades. In fact, Intelsat launched their first spacecraft from Kourou over 27 years ago. In 1983, an Intelsat-5 satellite built by Ford Aerospace, now Space System Lowell, was launched on Ariane 1. Today, Ariane is launching the 38th platform supplied by Space Systems Laurel, who are well-known faces here at the Guyana Space Center. Intelsat 17 is another example of a highly efficient and effective program with Intelsat and its partners, Space Systems Laurel and Ariane Space. We kicked off the program in July of 2008, and it's only been 28 months since inception through launch date. That's quite impressive for a spacecraft as complex as Intelsat 17. Throughout years of collaboration and with many missions under their belts, Intelsat and Ariane Space have developed a trusting relationship which grows with every launch. Intelsat is a long-standing customer, so though we have a well-run approach based on past experience, we still have to adapt to their new needs and find the best solutions for them. Integrating the satellites onto the launcher is a key moment in the campaign and of course it's made possible thanks to the skill and expertise of everyone involved. We've been very impressed with the people here at the launch base. The success of these programs is highly dependent on the people that work on them and I can say without a doubt that the people from Aryan Space and their launch teams, CSG, Freelance, Space Systems Laurel and Intelsat have all gone the extra mile to ensure that we've been successful up to this point. We are very pleased. So, Thomas, we're looking here at the what we call the upper composite, which is the upper stage with the two satellites attached. Can you just talk us through what we uh, were looking at? We can see it on the left-hand side of the screen. Yes, so basically you see there is a, a white disk, that's the upper stage, the SCA. Then just in front of it we have the SILDA, the Ariane 5 double launch system. Uh, ILS-1 is actually underneath, and at the front we can send Intelsat 17, which is exposed to the space. And Intelsat 17 is a fantastic piece of kit. Which of the world's first geocommunication satellite to the creation of the largest satellite fleet. Intelsat has a 45-year heritage of delivering secure, seamless, and easy access to people, information, and entertainment. Anywhere on the planet, anytime our customers need it. The needs of our media, network services, and government customers were the driving force behind the design of our next generation terrestrial network. Today, all you need is one. One global terrestrial architecture consisting of an IP MPLS based network, fiber, teleports, and points of presence fully integrated with our industry leading satellite fleet. The world of communications has changed dramatically. Your customers want fast, on demand information delivered anywhere on the planet to any device. Intelsat delivers more. <laughs> 